Andrew, I want to know about consciousness, and free will seems to be the ultimate probe of what consciousness really is. And I've talked to philosophers, theologians, uh, but from a physicist's point of view, uh, when you look at the world in which there are laws that all seem to work together, that the, the physical world is a closed system, it would seem that free will, ultimately, is very difficult to achieve. I personally find it helpful to shift the focus from free will to responsibility. Uh, because responsibility I find to be a clearer and more sharply defined concept. You could say that, that free will is a necessary, albeit not sufficient, condition for responsibility. But often I, I find it quite hard in some decisions to know how free I really was to choose and to what extent I was influenced by my background and my upbringing and my culture and circumstances. But the only sensible way that I can live my life is to know that I'm responsible for the choices that I make. Now, people ask uh, how free will is going to be compatible with the sort of increasingly sophisticated mechanistic descriptions of neurophysiology that we have. And um, because I do research in quantum technologies, they say, well, you know, would quantum indeterminism help uh, to allow for free will? Well, we don't actually have any experimental evidence that relevant quantum superpositions are involved in decision-making in the brain. They may be, but we've got no um, evidence That's at the moment That's a controversy, that. whether something at the quantum level really has any impact. And most of my neuroscience friends would say that to talk about the quantum events is such a, an order of magnitudes different than what happens at the core of, of brain activity, which is the neuron that doesn't make sense. I actually have a different issue that it, if quantum is involved, quantum is, is more of a random process, and randomness doesn't seem like free will any more than determinism seems like free will. If quantum processes are relevant in um, decision-making, which some people have postulated, yeah. we don't at the moment know what those processes are, and we don't have any account or very much data, I don't think, about what they would be. But let's just suppose, for the sake of discussion, that new and better empirical evidence comes along one day. How would that help with free will? Well, it might. You might say uh, the fact that there's quantum indeterminism means that that could be how free will operates. And in fact, one of the um, projects that, that uh, uh, Templeton World Charity Foundation is now supporting is investigating just that. Um, it's called projective simulation and it's a mechanism whereby quantum indeterminism might help with free will. But even if it helps with free will, it's not clear that it helps with responsibility for the reason you've just given, namely that if you replace a sort of previous 19th century rigid determinism mm -hmm. If you were to say that that excluded free will, which not everybody would say, but if you did say that, and then if you said, ah, we're now going to replace that with quantum randomness, that might make me freer, but I don't think it makes me any more, more responsible. responsible. Right, right. So it doesn't right. help with right. this uh, aspect of responsibility. So I have to admit that although I believe in the bottom of my soul, that I am responsible for my choices and that's how I live my life. I don't have a satisfactory account of how to relate that with the advances that are being made in neurophysiology. It happens that there are other areas of my uh, scientific life where I don't have satisfactory answers. I still don't understand what happens when we make a measurement of a quantum system in the lab and neither does anybody else or at least not in any way that everybody agrees about. You could say, hey Andrew, you know, you're being inconsistent. How can you carry on doing these quantum experiments when you don't even understand what happens when you're making a measurement and you can't answer the hard questions about that? 
To which my answer is, well, I just live with that um, unresolved question. I don't lose interest in studying the question, that's one of the things that we're talking about this week, but uh, I get on with the science and with the development of the technology because quantum theory is too robust and quantum technologies are potentially too exciting mm. to wait until I've resolved that question. Now, I think that you can, or I, you know, take the same approach with this question of free will and determinism. Curious enough, it's a question that I remember thinking about as I was walking along the cliffs in Norfolk as a 12-year-old. And I've since found other colleagues who also, at about that age, worried about questions of free will. And I would apply it also uh, to other aspects of the life of faith. So, for example, um, I don't have a satisfactory account of how it is that God responds when I pray. But prayer is too important and too robust to stop doing it until such questions are being resolved. And actually, I, I think that in the life of faith, we can take a lesson from the kind of science that I do of how to live with unresolved questions without it stopping you doing the science and also without losing passion to try to resolve the questions.